Howdy YouTube, a very special review for you guys today. We're taking a look at one of my favorite battle sets, a really old school pack, uh, the NWO Federation Poison as part of the WWE Jax line. A really uh, favorite pack of mine, mainly just because I loved the uh, NWO uh, when they were in WCW and then when they made the jump to WWE, I was a huge fan. Uh, even though a lot of people didn't like it, I'm not sure why, uh, I thought it was fantastic. Um, really, really cool. Very rare to uh, to actually find this set. I picked it up off eBay a long, long time ago. Um, really awesome. It comes in uh, some pretty cool retro-style packaging. I love, you can see the nice shot of X-Pac, who uh, made his uh, WWE return <coughs> as part of the NWO uh, on an episode of SmackDown in 2002. And then, of course, the outsiders, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, who uh, returned at No Way Out, along with uh, this guy, Hulk Hogan, who uh, would later uh, ditch them after his match with The Rock at WrestleMania 18. So a really cool set. I love the packaging of this. Uh, I love it. It says Federation Poison. The backstory, obviously, was that uh, Vince McMahon was in partnership with uh, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and in an attempt to try and destroy the WWE, he uh, brought in the NWO, and that's the, the famous scene you see where Vince McMahon is like, I'm going to kill them, and then he turns the chair around. It's got uh, NWO there in the uh, reflection on the mirror. It's fantastic. Really, really cool. Uh, at the top of the packaging, nice shot of all three members. As you can see, it says NWA Federation Poison. Jack's real face scans. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this uh, set stacks up against um, the more modern-day Mattel equivalents. So let's get it opened up and hopefully give you guys a cool review. Just taking a look on the back of the packaging, you see how old this actually is. Uh, there's a promo for the uh, original Xbox WWF uh, or WWE Raw game, uh, which I actually had on PC, uh, and it was a very, very hard-to-play game, but at the time, it was pretty cool. Um, as you can see, the Backlash ring comes with all the weapons and stuff, pretty cool. Um, awesome stuff, you know what I mean? Back in the days where you used to get a lot of accessories with basic figures, um, the Jax figures tend to get a lot of criticism. I actually don't mind them. I, I really like a lot of them, particularly the R3 series, because they serve uh, really, really well additions to the uh, newer Mattel figures. Uh, other six-inch figures, we've got uh, Kurt Angle, Kane, which is a pretty cool figure, uh, and Evil, Don't Trust Anyone, Austin, uh, The Undertaker, which actually looks like a really cool figure, uh, Triple H, and Edge. So let's get this set opened up. Okay, and here we have the NWO set opened up and out of packaging, and it is really, really cool. Very glad and very excited that I was able to pick this set up. Uh, it wasn't cheap, and it was very hard to find. Um, well, it was kind of cheap, but uh, well, it depends, I guess. Um, really, really cool. We'll start by taking a look at the figures, and then uh, I'll start comparing uh, a lot of the stuff um, that we've got. Just to get the accessories out the way, it does come with... Um, the Federation Poison Pack um, comes with some weapons, and that, of course, is the uh, Jack-style chair, which uh, is actually the exact same size as the Mattel one. Uh, the Mattel one feels a little bit better, but uh, still really, really cool to, to get the steel chair there. Uh, and then we get uh, a Jack's fire extinguisher, which is quite a bit smaller than the Mattel version. Um... But still, really, really cool. Two uh, decent accessories, but I'm not sure how they really relate to the NWO. And then finally, we get a sledgehammer. So uh, I love that each member came with uh, a different accessory. Uh, some of them, though, I don't think are as relevant, but uh, still, rather have them than uh, nothing. Now, in terms of the actual figures themselves, we'll start by taking a look at Big Sexy Kevin Nash. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite Kevin Nash face scans. Uh, one thing that annoys me a little bit is that uh, the hair, uh, you can see that obviously it's a separate piece and they've just stuck it on top of the head and you can see sort of the, the line there, um, which I think looks a little bit weird uh, because otherwise the hair is really nicely detailed, really well colored and everything like that. Uh, great, angry Kevin Nash face scan. For those who remember the storyline, uh, Shawn Michaels had joined the NWO, literally kicked Booker T out, uh, and then um, they had a, a great match, tag team match on Raw, and in the course of that match, Kevin Ash gets tagged in, and uh, I think he blew out his knee, um, 
and uh, basically the <laughs> the match was just a complete complete and utter mess. Uh, and then in response, uh, they actually dropped the whole angle and then started the feud between Triple H and um, Shawn Michaels and completely forgot about the whole NWI angle. Uh, got rid of X Park and uh, it, you know it was kind of a sad ending if I'm honest because it was. Uh, getting really good like uh it was just starting to pick up uh and go really strong um which is a shame moving down obviously he is in not his wrestling attire but uh he is in his uh standard nwo attire which he actually wore for a fair bit because he injured his knee i think at wrestlemania and then uh stayed like this for quite some time uh pretty cool uh he does have the standard jack's articulation which is the same for all these uh figures being r3 that's a ball jointed head, ball jointed arms, no movement in the bicep being older. Uh, bend at the elbow, he's got the finger articulation with the R3 series. Swivel waist, legs move forward and back. Oh, waist is a little stiff there. Forward and back, and this is literally, oh man, rock hard. Uh, bend at the knee, and then uh, it's a ball joint, which is awesome, uh, on the ankle. That's really, really cool. But it is not really limited at all. So um, that's awesome. The ball joints are really, really cool. Decent range of articulation there for Kevin Nash. Now, just for comparison, I've got him with uh, a TNA Jax, Kevin Nash, and also the Mattel um, Diesel. You can see he's a little bit shorter than the, the Diesel being an R3 figure, uh, but pretty much on par with the uh, TNA Legends. Kevin Nash. So honestly, a really cool figure. I'm a big fan of this guy. If you can find him, then uh, I think pick him up. He's probably my favorite Kevin Nash. The only downside about him is just the uh, the line here with the hair, but the face sculpt and everything. Uh, and he's got the NWO shirt. Uh, you can't beat that. So uh, really awesome Kevin Nash figure. Next up, we'll take a look at X-Pac, uh, one of the most underrated wrestlers, I think, of all time. Really talented in the ring. Um, nice uh, face sculpt. I honestly really don't like um, figures that have uh, you know pre-posed open mouth faces. Uh, why they have the tongue sticking out, I have no clue. And then what's even more puzzling is the fact that when Mattel released X Park, they did the exact same thing. Uh, it's literally pretty much the exact same face, actually. <laughs> so that's. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they've chosen to do that for X Park, but um, anyway, uh, still really really cool figure. I love him in the NWO attire. I think he was fantastic. Uh, he mainly feuded with Kane. He was uh, obviously part of the tag team with Kane. Turned on him, uh, stole his mask, which he wore uh, a fair bit. Had a feud. Uh, basically acted as um, Scott Hall's backup uh, in the NWO uh, until Scott Hall got fired. Uh, nice detail again. All the Jacks figures on the hair. Uh, have fantastic details. Being uh, real face scans, they uh, look fantastic as well. Obviously, the NWO shirt. I think it's very rare to actually find an X Park um, in NWO attire. I think this guy was only released twice, once in this set, and then also single carded as part of the WWE draft uh, set. So, pretty cool. As you can see, NWO on the tights. Uh, a really awesome uh, member, and uh, I guess this is really a click battle pack. But um, I think it's great that he was able to be uh, in both DX and the NWO, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll bring in the Mattel Elite um, x Puck. Uh, you can see they're actually the same height, um, which I'm really, really happy about because it means this guy fits in perfectly. Um, the difference between the DX attire and the uh, NWO, I don't think you'll see too often. Um, X Park in uh, both attires, so uh, that's really really exciting. I doubt Mattel will ever release an NWO X Park. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, in the meantime, this is all we've got. So for that reason, I'm a huge fan of this guy. And if you find him, I think absolutely he's worth uh, picking up. He certainly stacks up really well against the Mattel Elite X Park um, in terms of face detail and, and everything like that. The only thing that hampers him is that articulation, but then again, you're talking about a figure that is uh, much older as well. So, really, really cool. And uh, we saved the best for last, uh, maybe, uh, and that is Scott Hall, a really, really awesome Scott Hall figure. I'll zoom in so you guys can take a look at the face. Um, definitely looks like Scott Hall, uh, Scott Hall 
uh, when he returned to the WWE. Uh, he was actually fantastic. He was doing such a great job. And then uh, apparently, uh, based on listening to a lot of podcasts and stuff, that uh, he got drunk on a plane and uh, did some bad stuff and had to be uh, fired. Uh, which was a big shame because he was doing so well, especially uh, basically after WrestleMania. He had a great angle with Stone Cold uh, and then uh, feuded with Bradshaw for a little bit and uh, tagged with X-Pac a fair bit as Kevin Nash was out. Uh, but it was a shame when they got rid of him. It uh, it really, really was because they were uh, a great team, a great unit. Uh, and then I think that was sort of the beginning of the end. You can see, obviously, the NWO trunks. This guy, again, is a little bit rarer just because... Um, Normally, he was released with the red attire, and even Jax tended to release him with the uh, the red Scott Hall attire. So it's nice to see the uh, NWR on the vest and obviously on the trunks in the uh, famous black and white. Mattel have actually just released this guy um, with Kevin Nash as part of the Outsiders, but they're in basically a similar attire to this. Um, and they look like pretty awesome figures, actually. If you get a chance, then uh, I would say pick up that set no question uh in terms of articulation standard r3 ball jointed head ball jointed arms bend at the elbow uh swivel waist finger articulation um legs move forward and back i think it's interesting that he's got the uh smaller knee pads uh but i guess because he's got the bigger boots one of the problems i have with this guy is he's uh actually about the same height as uh x puck and uh, for those that know scott hall is a big dude so uh that's a little bit of a shame there i will bring in the uh, Defining Moments Razor Ramon, uh, which is a excellent figure. If you get a chance, that's a, a must-have for any Scott Hall fan. Uh, you can see he's only a little bit shorter. Again, the benefit of getting the R3 jacks uh, means that this set fits in really well. Uh, the face on this is fantastic. That's, the I think, the best Scott Hall face of all time. But you got to remember that's a real face scan, so it's not too bad either. Um, he has the toothpick... Uh, stuck in his mouth as well, uh, which I don't mind. So really, really cool. Big fan of uh, both these figures, actually. And here we have my NWO figure collection. Very, very proud of this set. It's probably my favorite faction of all time. Uh, we've got the Mattel Macho Man, the Jax Kevin Nash, uh, Hulk Hogan, X-Pac, Scott Hall, and then the Mattel giant uh 